grade. That's when we first met. You remember that? I do. Long time ago. That was a long time ago. I wish that I could was... go back in time and fix that. That was probably what, 20 something? Yeah, over years? 20 years. Yeah. That is bizarre. Uh, yeah, I feel very old every time I think about the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or how long ago the 90s actually were. Yeah. Um, but so when we first met is a Netflix movie. I don't know if it's Netflix. considered a Netflix movie. I don't know if it's considered an original. I think Netflix bought it. Um yeah, probably. Um does that make it an original? What I mean, they kind of just throw original on everything, so Yeah, so what I understood, or at least the way I like to think about it, I could be wrong and then just living in is my own. If Netflix was like the production company. Yes. If they if they got the script and greenlit it and paid for it at that point. Yeah. Because those seem to be much higher quality than just oh, yeah. the Netflix distributed. Yeah, the, it, it should be more like a Netflix exclusive, right? Yeah. It, it's not their content. Re- I mean, I guess they pay for it, then fine. But, like, they didn't develop it. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But this... That's why I always see it. Uh, yeah, I'm always like, oh, wow, look at all the stuff that they've got going <laughs> on. But they're just grabbing everything. Yeah. But this is actually pretty good. I would say so, yes. Uh This is with Adam Devine. Devine? How does he pronounce his last Divine. name? I think it's Divine. Uh, you got Adam, Adam Divine, Alexandria Daddario. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. I think so. Daddario. Uh, and then Robbie and Hi Ho Daddario. Those are the, the people I, you kind of really recognize. Uh, wait, who was the third one? Robbie Amell. He's, who did he play? He's the guy who was the, uh, Alexandria Daddario is love interest. The, okay, I got you. He's I actually cousins with Stephen Amell, who is the Green Arrow uh, over on the CW. Oh, right. That's where I don't recognize him. <laughs> um, also, I guess Andrew Bachelor, the black guy, he's been in quite a bit of stuff too. Hmm, okay. But, uh, yeah, no, so the premise, the idea, Adam Devine meets this girl, he, they really hit it off, they have a great night, they almost kiss, but it, he, I don't think, he just kind of doesn't pull the trigger, right? Like, he kind of chickens out. Yeah. And, uh, fast forwards. And ruins his whole life. Ruins his whole life. Fast forwards three years, and she is now getting married to someone else. He f- finds out he can go back in time in a photo booth and go. Keep in mind, this is, this is person that she met the very next day. Yes. Yeah. So she meets her fiance the day after they almost fall in love. Because he ate all of her cereal. So she had to go shopping. Yes. But so he finds out he can go back in time and he, he goes, ends up going back in time about five times trying to get her to fall in love with him. And each time, uh, he changes something and it, it wrecks everything yeah. pretty much. Yeah. As time travelers, uh, typically do. <laughs> I thought it was a, uh, an interesting concept, um, similar to Butterfly Effect where you, you go mm-hmm. far back and change one thing and it drastically changes everything else. Um, yeah. for a romantic comedy, I thought it was like, it was pretty funny. Um, the, I think they did a, a really good job. I, I really like Adam Devine in almost everything. Oh, I think he's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to their Die Hard parody, him and the guys from Workaholics. Oh yeah, that. Oh, that's uh. Hold on, I'm trying to remember what that one's called. I just saw the trailer for that not that long ago. It looks really funny. Yeah, that's a Netflix movie, I believe. Yeah. What What is that one called? Um. Oh man. I'm trying to uh, Is it game over, man? Yes. Yeah, game over, man. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty funny. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the whole premise of this movie. I figure the best way to go through it is to talk about each time he goes back in time. Okay. Um, so the first time when they meet, you know, it's just kind of normal. He, so he goes dressed up. So it's a Halloween party. Yep. And the first time he goes dressed up as, <laughs> why can't I remember? What was the first costume? I, uh, I'm completely blanking. He was. Oh, was he Garth? Was that the first one? Yes, that's what it was. Okay. So the first time they meet, he goes as Garth from Wayne's World. She is yes. the girl from um, a League of Their Own. League of Their Own. They hit it off. They talk about jazz music. She finds out that he's a, a jazz musician at a bar, and everything goes great. Uh, the second, the first time he goes back, he decides he's going to be suave, right? I think he yeah. goes as was it like James Bond or something like that? James Bond, yeah. And uh, he knows everything. He's going to use her. all this information about her. To give him a leg up, and it just, he ends up coming off as creepy. Well, he comes off as a, a giant jerk, I think. Yeah. You know, he, cause he's like answering, like speaking for her, giving her, like using her answers. Like he's just like so ahead of everything. He's like just trying to jump, uh, jump forward, but, um, like in the relationship, like he's just trying to speed through it. And, mm-hmm. but what had happened before they even met, he ran into her roommate and was talking to her about it and was like, Hey, where's so and so? And she's like, What are you talking about? You, I don't know who you are and all this different stuff. And so she ends up taking her hit. Oh, Alexandria Daddario takes Adam Devine. Sorry if I'm getting those two names wrong. I, I definitely feel like I am for sure. But well, I, look, I know that they're both avid listeners. If we're saying it wrong, they'll let us know. <laughs> well, more for the people who are listening and know that I'm getting it wrong. I'm sure that that's frustrating to hear. But anyway. I don't think either of us, our moms know <laughs> if it's right or wrong. <laughs> they, she takes him back to her house and that's where he runs into the roommate and she's like, this is the creepy guy I was telling you about. And then so they attack him. He runs out. Then he goes. So when he goes to sleep in the past, he wakes up uh, again in the future. In the present time. In the present. But he also time travels in the present time, too. <clears throat> so he could, what do you mean? So when he goes back, he lives a day, right? He lives the engagement party or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Then he goes back in time, relives Halloween goes back in time and it's the engagement party again. Yeah, okay. So it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah. But for two different days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just okay. th- three days or three years apart. Um so he goes to visit her to, like for the party and all because that. Cuz they're still like best friends. Yeah, so he goes back at least at, at first cuz he he gets really drunk at the uh, engagement party. And has to get driven home by the roommate, which even the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, these two are clearly going to end up together. They have the chemistry. They they have that back and forth of every romantic comedy uh, couple. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this, these are the two are going to end up together. And uh, spoiler well, alert, I was I did, right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't necessarily think that, but I, I, I did, I, I did, I remember thinking they, they do have too much chemistry for this to not like be weird later. Yeah. Yeah, no, they they seem like they seemed really well matched. It just in that yeah. car ride. And uh but uh so yeah, so she goes to apologize for being drunk the original night. Then they see him and they're like, "It's the stalker again." And they attack him. It's and him again. <laughs> Which was yeah, funny. Like three years later, he shows up and acts. All, I don't know. I I just think that'd be funny. Yeah. But yeah, pretty much. But so he goes back and time travels again to try again, and this time he goes back as uh just a jerk, right? Like that's his strategy is just to play it cool, to just kind of be rude and like jerk his way into a yeah. relationship. 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerk his way in. And, uh, it works. She like gets real attracted to him. They hook up. He wakes up three years later and they're together, except now he's got frosted tips, which was. Oh yeah. The best part of this whole movie was his frosted tips that like that. I don't know Wait. why it's so stupid, but it was my favorite joke probably throughout this whole movie. Well, it's funny because that's not, that's not like a really a thing that people do anymore. Yeah. But it, it really just looked like sugar, eh? It, it felt like exactly his character being a jerk. Like it felt being so, the jerk. Yeah. So perfect. Like he just became that, like he had to like keep being that person for, for the relationship to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was pretty funny. And so they, they, they're just like, um, just random hookups. They don't, they don't have a relationship. They just, Get together, yeah. to get, you know, booty call or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's what I want to call it. <laughs> thanks for making me feel more uncomfortable for my <laughs> choice of words. Uh, <laughs> so they, they, he's happy because they're together, but then he realizes that, um, uh, Robbie and Mel's character and her are like, they keep like our, like magnets are getting pulled together in every, mm-hmm. In every scenario, and he like can't figure it out. He's really successful, so they are like combating, or he's like frustrated that he that she's attracted to him because of his success. So he ends up going back in time again, and this time instead of really changing the party, he changes his job. He goes and gets a job and starts pursuing a career, gets her to fall oh, in love yeah. with him, and. uh Wakes he up. He inevitably takes his friend's job or the job that his friend wanted. Yeah. And becomes super successful while his friend doesn't really go anywhere, which I guess is still technically his own fault. Yeah. He, he betrays his friend, takes his job, ends up fat and rich, but married to Alexandria. Dadario, Dadario. Well, are they married or they're they're also engaged? They're engaged. Right? Like yeah, they're you're gonna right. have their own engagement party. Yeah. But she is in um, love with Robbie Amell yeah. again, and he he meets because as yeah. The, oh, sorry, keep going. Yeah. So then he he talks to the roommate character, and he's like, "Does she? Why doesn't she love me?" Like he like realizes that like there's nothing that I can do to get her to love me. And then this is where you start to see their relationship mm-hmm. kind of start sticking its head out. And, uh, he realizes like, you know what? They're meant to be together. And he goes back as Cupid. I think there might have been one more, right? Am I missed? Did I skip over one? I'm trying to think. So where's the one where he tries to go back, but the photo booth is gone? That was the Cupid one. So okay. he, he goes yeah. back as Cupid. To get them together, and he focuses on, I think just that. I don't think he focuses I on believe so. the the roommate at that point. Or actually, no, he does. No, he does focus on the roommate at that point. He does he? Yeah, he wants to. He realizes he loves her, that he wants to be with her. So he tries to get Robbie and Alexandria together, and he focuses on her. They have this great night, but that's right. Their night ends when he. You know, goes back. She never talks to him again for the three years. And he's like, what? I don't understand what happened. What wrong? Yeah. Like everything was great. She's dating this other guy and all this stuff. And so he's like, I got to get back. I got to, I got to go back and not do anything. I can't change anything. I just have to let things happen the way they happened originally is how they should have happened this whole time. Goes back to the bar. The universe was trying to make these things happen. Yeah. Because, like, like in the great words of Jacob from Lost, <laughs> the universe has a way of course correcting itself. <laughs> he goes back to the bar and the photo booth is I've been gone. been trying to shoehorn that in this whole time. <laughs> the photo booth is gone and he's panicking. He's like, it's, I don't know. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, how am I ever going to go back? I've ruined everything. And then he finds out, which I, I didn't really like this part. But he finds out that, that they Ale- bought it for him. Yeah, they bought it for him because it. There would be. It was implausible. 
be no reason for it to be special to him. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's also, those are probably really expensive. And yeah. Yeah. Why would you buy that for him? Yeah. That, yeah. It, if anything, like you would buy it for yourself and your, you know, the other guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, th- that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> I found the time travel more plausible than that actually. Happened. Yeah. No, I agree. But so he goes back in time, lets everything happen naturally and ends up together with the, uh, the roommate. Yeah. He pretty much lives his life the last three years over again, just not being hung up on the Dario. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, it was decent. It was, it was a fun movie. It's a fun watch. Uh, like there's no, there's not, there's nothing challenging about it. You don't watch it and feel like, no, you don't have to think about it, which, especially for, for a time travel movie. Yeah. <laughs> which is nice it's just, sometimes. It's just kind of there. It is. Like, I, I agree. I appreciate, you know, like, I, I think I, I have a hard time with a lot of movies being lazy or not being challenging. But I enjoy mm-hmm. a movie that's just kind of easy to watch. As long as I'm not told that it's, like, important to my life. Right. You know, yeah. like, as soon as someone starts saying, like, oh, this is going to change you. This is so important for society. This is so whatever, whatever. Like, as soon as that happens, I'm like, all right, well, that's, that sounds good. If that's true, that's great. And then if the movie right doesn't do it at all, it's like, what was the point? Like, why? Yeah. But this is, this was just fun. You know, this was just a entertaining movie. Adam Devine does great. You know, he does. Yeah, he's a great actor. He's, he's come a long ways. And then Ale- Alexandra Daddario is fine. For her character, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like her character was really bland intentionally. Yeah, it was a little bland. Um, because I think you're supposed to enjoy well, the roommate. They don't want you, well, yeah, they don't want you to root for those two to get together. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I agree. The, the thing I really didn't like though at the end is when you find out everything that he liked. About Alexander Daddario's character, everything he was attracted to initially was mm-hmm. because of the roommate. That, yeah, that was a little, uh, what's the word? It was, I don't know. Con- convenient, yeah. as you like to say. It was very forced. Like, there, there's no reason why he couldn't be attracted to her initially on a first impression, but still fall in love with the roommate reasonably. Yeah. But the movie was like, oh, don't worry, guys. He actually was never They're attracted to her. not actually compatible yeah. at all. Yeah. It's always been the other girl. And it's like, all right. And, and it was stupid stuff. It was the costume belonging to the roommate, mm-hmm. her music choice being her playlists or the, you know. Yep. Um, and it, it's just, I don't know. It was just like unnecessary. It, yeah. It didn't need to be like that. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good movie. Overall, I yeah, I agree. Anything else um, stand out to you about this movie? Um, I'm gonna say no. I think it's it it is what it is. Not much else to say. I think I liked it. Yeah. That's that's about it. Yeah, I, I think there's time travel. I think can be tough. Because there's a lot of things that can really screw things up. Uh, but I appreciate, similar to Groundhog Day, they don't really get into it. They're like, you know what? Well, Just accept it. We're going to move th- on. And that's that. the best way to do it, especially with a comedy. Like, I don't need to, like, fully understand how time travel works in this particular universe. And I don't need to, like, have to, I don't have to worry about, like, continuity and, like, inaccuracies because it like it doesn't matter yeah. right you mm-hmm. just have to understand what, what time travel is um as opposed to like a drama or action or something else I, I i do feel like they have to do a better job with how they do it and in comedies they d- d- they don't yeah you get a little bit more freedom because of the focus like it's a it's the frame of the picture not necessarily the picture itself where like a science yeah. fiction movie that's about time travel the focus is on the time travel at that point. And so like if your time travel mechanics are weak, 
then it gets a lot harder. Like I think the, I think you can hold say butterfly effect. There's a lot more scrutiny held to that than to this movie because it's more serious. It takes I guess it takes itself more serious, so it it forces right. you to do the same. And then so at that point it's a lot harder to buy into. Yeah, no, I agree. But yeah, so um yeah. That was our thoughts on uh when we first met. I think yeah, I think again, I think it's pretty good. Um Yeah, I recommend it. Next week we are going or not next week, but the next episode, we're gonna do Jumanji. Welcome back to the jungle. I think it's just welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. To the jungle. Th- isn't that the Guns N' Roses song? Welcome back to the jungle. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it goes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's our next episode. If you want to listen to it now, you can go over to Patreon and get all our episodes two weeks in advance. Uh, you can follow Do us it. on Twitter at I Sing That Pod. Like us on Facebook. But yeah, we'll be back with Jumanji. Woo woo!